Hi everyone, welcome to this exciting tutorial. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of fabric creation in Clo 3D. Our focus, crafting beautiful Gipur lace. If you've ever wondered how to bring intricate lace patterns to life using simple tools, you're in the right place. Let's get started. So, we're going to explain how to create our first Gipur fabric. Gipur fabrics come in different types, and I want to explain one of them here. The first type of Gipur fabric we'll discuss involves using black and white patterns. Using these patterns, we can create Gipur or lace fabric. You can search for Gipur fabric vector online to download the images or patterns you need. Then, We'll apply some edits in Photoshop to prepare them for easy use in Clo 3D. Let's begin with the first Gipur fabric type, created using black and white images. First, open your patterns or image in Photoshop. If the image is black and white, all we need to do is generate a normal map from it. How can we create a normal map in Photoshop? Go to the filter menu, select 3D, and click on Generate Normal Map. Wait for the Normal Map window to open. Once the Normal Map window opens, you'll see that your patterns has turned into shades of blue and purple. Using the Invert Height option, you can reverse the map to suit your needs. What does inverting the map mean? If you look closely, our fabric is lace, and the edges of the pattern should be raised. So, by inverting, the edges become more prominent while the background is recessed. We don't need to adjust the settings in this window because the default normal map works well. However, if the normal map doesn't turn out as expected for other images, I'll explain how to modify these settings in the future. Once done, click OK, and now you just need to export your file. Now let's move to Clo 3D. Close Photoshop and open Clo 3D. Create a fabric piece of your choice. By default, a fabric option is added to your project, or you can add one yourself. It's completely unedited at this point. Go to the texture section and add the black and white image we downloaded earlier. As you can see, the pattern is applied to the fabric. Scroll down to the normal map section. You can use the slider to automatically generate a normal map based on the texture or upload the one we created in Photoshop. Well, for now, we will continue with the normal map that we created in Photoshop, so we will add this here. Next, under the displacement map, adjust the depth of the pattern. Again, we can use the same black and white image to define the raised and recessed areas. I'll explain how to fine-tune it for a more realistic effect. Scroll down further to the Opacity Map section. Here, we'll use the same black and white pattern. The black parts will be removed, making the fabric appear transparent and giving it the lace effect. As you can see, the Gipur or lace fabric is taking shape. For now, we won't touch the other options. In the displacement map, set the particle distance to 1 for a softer look and the amount to 2. Now let's move to the render section. Click refresh to see how our fabric looks so far. As you can see, the Gipur fabric is created, but it needs some adjustments. Since our pattern is small, the amount we set is too high. How do we know this? By observing the thickness of the fabric. 
I'll stop the render and reduce the amount to 0.5, then refresh again. Now you can see the edges of the fabric look finer and better. The thickness we initially added was too much, and the details of the texture didn't look good. Now let's test something else. If we set the normal map intensity to 10, it looks like this. But what if we increase it to 100? You'll notice that the normal map adds a dark effect to the fabric. So, we need to be cautious when choosing a value, and 10 seems just right. Next, I want to enlarge the texture. Using the Edit Texture option, click on the fabric and adjust its scale. Note, if you apply the texture first, then change the scale, and later add other maps, it might cause issues. Ensure the width and height values are consistent across all sections. If not, adjust them accordingly. Refresh the render again to see how the enlarged texture looks. The details appear much better now, but there's a line visible in the pattern. To fix this, either edit it out in Photoshop or move the fabric lower in Clo 3D so it's not visible in the render. One more thing to consider. After scaling the fabric, the thickness may lose its appeal. To fix this, increase the displacement map amount to 1.5 and refresh. Let's do one final test. I'll stop the render and remove the normal map. Assume we didn't create a normal map in Photoshop and only used the black and white pattern across the texture, displacement map, and opacity map sections. Setting the intensity in the normal map section to 10. Let's see how Clo 3D's built-in normal map performs. Refreshing the render shows it works quite well. To speed up your workflow, I recommend using Clo 3D's normal map most of the time. I'll reduce it to 1 since it's currently too strong. Notice the fabric's thick edges. Let's now experiment with changing the fabric's material. For instance, switching from matte to silk gives it a shiny effect. You can test different materials like velvet or even leather to see their impact, though deep or lace is rarely leather. Finally, let's go back to silk and satin, change the color, and refresh. For example, we can make it red or purple.
Purple looks fantastic, so let's keep it. As you've seen, we created a beautiful Gipur fabric using a simple black and white texture. In the next videos, I'll teach you how to create other types of fabrics. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss any updates.